I'm back again. Yeah, we're bouncing just a little bit. <laughs> I'm sure it'll stop in a minute. Um, remember, I said to buy these if you could not. Well, just I think yesterday I said that. I hauled this yesterday, and I'm going to redo it because a lot of people are having problems finding the uh, the 20 inch candy cane uh, wreath forms. This is smaller. It is it's basically seven and a half by 15 inches. So this will be a smaller one, but I am going to look at this and I'm going to um, unravel it. And um, Anna Claire's going to be kind of fussy a little bit, but this will be a time lapse anyway, so you won't hear it. I'll probably try to play music or something. And once I get this done unraveling, then um, I'll get out of the time lapse. But let me get set up and we will begin. Okay, so I was looking this over, and at the, the beginning right here, at the top, I will, I'll call this, I guess, the top. This is where it would start, and then this would be where it would end. There are little, I don't know if you can see, there are little, like, spike things, and it's just wrapped around it. See that little spike? This was just wrapped around it. So I'm just, and if you saw, um, I'm sorry if you're watching, and I can't remember who, but somebody did a tutorial on um, the witch's hat on undoing it and making it into a, a cornucopia. And if I remember, I will try to link that below so I can give her proper credit. But you just kind of go back and forth, and um, the uh, snowflakes are glued on there they seem to be and you kind of have to pull at the point where the snowflakes are because the snowflakes are kind of glued on so you just kind of it doesn't rip it you just kind of have to put a little bit more effort into it and it's just it's just literally wrapped back and forth this is probably about the end let me see okay see they got it going up that way <clears throat> so now i have to find the end of the white. Oh, and it was just kind of buried under there, and there it is. And it's just twisted around. And this is my first time um, doing this, so it's, it's not going to go quickly for me. So now that I kind of showed you how it goes, I'm going to do a time lapse on this. Okay, now I've kind of got it off, I'm going to show you. There's these little hooks. And then it's just wrapped back and forth, so you just, this is the movement that you're going to make. You're going to pull it down, and then right here, I guess they've got it wrapped around and around. And there it goes. And so this is what you end up with. And what I want to do, I have all of these fat quarters left from um, when I decorated Anna Claire's room. I did a, um, I guess you call them banners over her crib. I'll uh, insert pictures of it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and just kind of cut them into strips. You're going to want to go through uh, these two first, and then you'll go through these, and you're going to kind of stack it on it, and then you'll go through these, and you're just going to kind of keep working back and forth. You know, go through, tie one through here. Let me get one and show you what I mean. This one's, these are strips left over, like I said, for me making the um, the banners. So I haven't even cut fresh strips. I'm just using up some old scraps. And that's the great thing about this. If you're a person who sews and has a lot of scrap material, that's what is awesome about this thing. Um, you want to make sure it's long enough. This piece, it was, way, it was way too short. I couldn't tie it around. So it's better to make them too long and then go back and trim them than to make them too short. But what you're going to do, I'm going to start right here just, just to show you. 
So I'm going to go through right here. And like I said, I want the pattern facing me so that when I tie it into a knot, it will be up. And if you want to, you can kind of tie this one longer so you can, when you're cutting, you're not having to trim as much. And then just tie a knot. But you just tie a knot. And if you want to, tie them twice. Just to be on the safe side. I might do that. Just go ahead and tie them twice. Yeah, just tie them twice. And then go through and um, you can trim as you go so that it's easier and you're not getting all these long pieces stuck within each other. And it would help if you have a better pair of scissors than what I have. That's how a pretty knot will look. It's like that. And then you'll take another piece and you'll just weave it through the next one and then here it's a little difficult to get around this little dot right there and matter of fact, you might can, since it's plastic, you might can trim that if, if it gets to be too hard to work around. It might be something you could just trim off. All right. Okay. So that is the second one. And then the third one will go with this one and this one. And then that way you have two that to weave in because if you just go here, if you just go all the way up here and just go all the way up here, then you'll have all this right here and you won't be able to weave them in. That was the issues I was having down here. So it's best to go back and forth like this or you can start here and go this way, whichever direction, just make sure you go all the way across. Okay. And if you want to, you can make a pattern or you can just totally be sporadic. And the great thing about this is something that you don't need a hot glue gun. So you can just if you, go ahead and have your scraps cut and totally just sit there and watch TV and, and do this. Get this through here. And you got these little hook things to work around, so you just kind of have to work around them. This this is definitely not something that can be done quickly. This might even be something that takes you a few nights. That you, you know, you work on it for an hour one night, and then you come back to it and do it another hour. If it takes that long, I don't know. We will see how long it takes. But that kind of gives you an idea of how it will look. Just kind of... You know a little raggedy looking but I will um, I will probably do a time try to do a time lapse on this and we'll see how long it ends up being and I might have to trim some areas but that that is how you make it I'm just double knotting it the best thing to do of course is to go ahead and pre-cut your strips and have them ready to where you can just grab like, and you can use ribbon I have some scraps of ribbon you can totally just take if you've got Say, say you're not a sewer, but say you, you make um, hair bows. You have a hair bow business and you've got a ton of ribbon left and you just got little bitty pieces. You can just take that ribbon and just tie it on there. And of course, I'm not gonna double knot this right now, but just double knot it on there and do this with a ribbon. And of course, you can use any colors. The reason why I'm doing these colors is I'm going to actually put this in Anna Claire's room for Christmas. So that's why these are not necessarily Christmassy colors. Okay. 
as you um, tie these, just make sure you're, you're, you're sliding it down so you get it tight. But see how it looks kind of raggedy? And I'm going to go back and trim a lot of these. If it's short, it looks cuter. It fluffs up a lot better. Okay, I think if I keep going with this, this is going to be an extremely long video. So I think that I have hopefully showed y'all how to do this. I'm going to go through and I'm going to make it and then I'll show you how it turned out at the end. Okay, I'm, I'm about an hour in and I'm about halfway at the halfway point. Not, well, yeah, like right at. So if you go ahead and pre-cut, your fabric it probably wouldn't take as long but I'm cutting as I go so that's why it's taking me so long but it's looking really cute okay I wanted to show you real quickly how I'm actually doing this I'm just actually ripping the fabric and all I'm doing is just cutting a little bit into it and then I'm just taking it and just ripping it And that's what's going to give you that um, rough edge. This is kind of, um, I guess you can call it a shabby chic candy cane wreath. Wreath. I guess a shabby chic would be a way to call it. But that's, that's just how I'm uh, doing my strips. I'm making them long and skinny. Because if they're skinny, then they're easier to tie than the, the fat ones. And um, as you go... You don't have to push it down as far. You can let it spread out. You just want to make sure, you know, that you're not seeing any of your um, wreath form. All right, I'm still not done. <laughs> I've been working on this for two and a half hours. And this is where I am. Okay, so you're probably wondering, well, what do I do about the curve? When you get up here to this curve, you're probably going to want to do two before you go back down. Just just kind of work it to where you get it to where it's even lined up. You just kind of have to play with it. But that's kind of what I did was I would do one here, one here, and then up here I would do two, and then one here, one here, and then I would do two. And that just kind of gets it to the even out part. And right now, I feel like it looks like a hot mess. But... When it gets done, if I don't like it, um, I can always trim it to give it back the candy cane form. But I might like it all shabby chic like that and leave it like that. But it is something with it being material that you can just go back and trim it. Okay, this took about three hours and this is where I am. What I did was I just went through and I just trimmed out the shape to make it more candy cane. You can do as much trimming. That's the great thing about this method. This right here, I might go through and trim this down too so it's not as wide. But you just go through and fluff and trim and to your heart's desire until it, you have the look you want. Oh, I did want to mention, save all your little scraps. Um, You can make some cute ornaments from it. You can do Mod Podge with the uh, styrofoam balls or you can take the clear balls that you can feel and you can stick the material in there. So definitely save your scraps. Something else you can do is maybe use a scarf that's made out of a material that you can cut and it wouldn't completely unravel. You could also use the um, also go to Walmart and buy the the blankets that are 288 that was originally what I thought about doing or what I had thought about doing was getting the um <clears throat> the plaid uh scarves I'm sorry I'm getting hoarse at night I start getting hoarse um 
the plaid scarves that Dollar Tree is supposed to have. I don't know when they're going to have it out. But I wanted to go ahead and get this DIY done so y'all could see a way that you could do it. And then go ahead and be buying your wreath before they get gone. So, but I think it turned out really cute. And like I said, it's, it's to go into Anna Claire's room. You can do any color combination you want. I wanted to show something that wasn't so traditional because I know not everybody decorates with um with red and green. The um I I bought these fat quarters at uh Walmart and I had bought them in a pack. I wanna say it was a pack of five, but you can get fat quarters I think for ninety four or ninety eight cents. It's less than a dollar. And I would probably say six fat quarters total would do it, so six dollars. And then you could decide if you wanted to do, I know a lot of people like to do like pink and green for uh, Christmas. Uh, you might could even use, I'm not sure how they would tear or how they would cut, well, I'm sure you could cut them, but you could use bandanas. Um, you can get those, I know they can get those pretty cheap. And a bandana probably is about the size of a fat quarter. I know you can get them, sometimes I've seen them at Dollar Tree, but I think you can actually get them at Walmart and they might they might be cheaper than a dollar. I honestly can't remember when I bought mine. But this is very versatile. You can do all kinds of, of things. Like I said, you can use ribbon. But I just I love it. And it's it's gonna go in Anna Claire's room and it'll her she will have I can't wait to show y'all her decorations. She'll have a white Christmas tree with basically these colors. I'm gonna be doing blue and pink and lime green and I think some purple also so this will look really cute hanging in her room but that is it for this tutor tutorial back in dog if you liked it please give me a thumbs up if you're not yet a subscriber click below and subscribe then go check out the uh, 411 on uh, fun Friday you'll want to enter that it's a giveaway I'll do every week but thank y'all for watching. I love you all. Have a great night.